Certain combinations that you would expect to see. Like you're going to see the Iron Crown and the MDD if you see either of them. You're probably going to see the Tornadus with either the Reggie Drago or the Urshifu. You know, I, I don't think you necessarily see an Ogre Pond lead in this matchup, but let's see what the winning in is. We do get the Urshifu and the Tornadus lead from one trainer, but Justin Karras starting things off with good old Ndidi and Iron Crown. Well, I think they're kind of a safe lead for both trainers. Notably, Wolf does not have a terrain sitter, so as soon as Justin gets that psychic terrain up, it will remain on the field for the rest of the game, which is really good for Justin. You're blocking the priority, you're boosting the power of that expanding force, and importantly, making expanding force a double target move. In this case, the Urshifu will get clean knocked out by expanding force, and Tornadus will take a lot of damage as well. The only psychic resist on Wolf's side of the field is that Incineroar, which will come in very handy against the two psychic types and the steel type, but of course, you're not going to pack a team with, with size fan like this without Incineroar answers. We see Tornadus kick things off with a Protect, and Urshifu, thanks to that Choice Scarf item, will use U-Turn and give Wolf the opportunity to pivot in that Incineroar. You have to assume that's exactly the Pokemon that's going to come to the field, just like you were saying. It is really the only Pokemon on Wolf's side of teams that can handle the expanding force as its start typing means that it cannot take any psychic type damage. This does mean that the Ndidi does have a moment here to uh, get a little bit of damage in with that Dazzling Gleam, but that's so much less than the threat that the Expanding Force had that that's a very fair trade for Wolf. It's a very fair trade, and also I think a very smart non-trick room from Justin there. I think the U-turn into Incineroar was kind of the most easy, the most, you know, forthcoming play the Wolf could have made there. And obviously it was a great win, like that's very hard to punish. But at the same time, if you can see that coming as Justin, going for Trick Room there makes the Incineroar much more of a threat. Whereas now you have the possibility of at least scaring it with a Terra Blast water type. Follow me from Ndidi means that any single target attacks will not be able to target down that Iron Crown. And we see Wolf set up Tailwind for speed control. Knockoff will be enough to KO that Ndidi. Uh, will not reveal the item, but we know from open team sheets it's safety goggles. There we go. <laughs> and then that expanding force again, unable to connect with the Incineroar, will connect with that Tornadus, bringing it down to one HP and revealing the focus sash. I think that's a really nice turn for your wolf there. The trick room threat is now gone. The follow me threat is now gone. You got Tailwind up. You know that your Incineroar is faster than Iron Crown and Tailwind, which can, which can come in handy, especially considering you have the option to, you know, parting shot out, you know, make sure it's not getting any of those really strong expanding forces off. And the Focus Ash on Tornado is coming in very handy here because it is able to stick around, possibly set up a Rain Dance if you want to boost your own Urshifu's water type attacks later on in the game. Uh, and of course, just keep that Pokemon advantage. You have the tool to switch it out and back in if you need to. And an at least early on in a game, especially a game as important as this, as this one, I think that's a really smart play from Wolf. Yeah, I think that you really have to slow things down in this kind of um, position, especially when you have an Iron Crown and an Urshifu on the opposing side of the field. Yes, you're not going to be dealing as much damage. You might not secure a knockout this turn or the next turn. But I think the big difference for Wolf as he navigates into this end game is just getting enough chip damage down onto the opposing Pokemon so that his when his Urshifu takes the field, when his final Pokemon takes the field, he can lock in those knockouts. He does take this opportunity to lock in his Terrastalization Grass type oh, into the no. Incineroar. Urshifu will dodge the Bleak Wind Storm from that Tornadus which means it will not take any damage this turn, and we see Surging Strikes hit the Incineroar three times, but I think the bigger question is, will Iron Crown be able to attack and just knock it out now that the Dark Typing's gone? Exactly, removing that Trestalization, removing the Dark Type means that there is no longer that Psychic Immunity, and because Booster Energy was consumed, that knockoff doesn't even do too much damage. Yeah, oh. that Incineroar will hold on with a little bit of health from that expanding force, but unfortunately the Tornadus will be KO'd this turn, and uh, Wolf, while he does still have the advantage of Tailwind on his side, uh, will have to play very carefully, especially seeing how little knockoff did after the booster energy activation. There's an unfortunate Bleak Wind Storm miss there too, if you're Wolf at Tornadus, considering the Focus Sash might be trained more offensively, so you maybe expect a lot of damage, if not a one to KO into that Urshifu, with without that Bleak Wind Storm miss. The Surging Strikes damage kind of inconsequential.
consequential though because he again did terrestrialize into that grass type but now this urshifu coming back in for wolf i believe is also the choice scarf so should be able to attack before justin's possibly score a knockout on this iron crown with the surging strikes so that may be kind of close uh, but this urshifu on justin's side i wouldn't say is really being threatened at all, Gabby. I, I don't think it is. And the big question for me is, yes, you can use your Shifu to knock out the Iron Crown here, but if you don't have a Pokemon in the back that can handle the opposing Urshifu, that might not be your best play. And especially looking at how Wolf opted in to lock into close combat instead of the Rapid Strike attack, I do think that's an indication that he's trying to optimize for damage on the opposing Urshifu long-term, who is currently locked into Surging Strikes. That being said, though, even though those Surging Strikes are not very effective. They are more than enough damage to pick up a <laughs> KO on Wolf's Incineroar, bringing the Pokemon score down to two Pokemon each. Yeah, good call out there. You kind of have to lock into close combat at this point. If you do lock into that Surging Strikes, you're giving yourself very few options to damage the Urshifu on Justin's side of the field. Fortunately for Wolf, Fluttermane does come out, which is one of the best Pokemon you can possibly have to damage an Urshifu uh, because of that strong Fairy-type Dazzling Gleam or Moonblast. The Earth Flame, Hearth Flame Ogre Pond comes out for Justin, and unlike some of the other ones we've seen throughout the day, this one does carry Follow Me. So considering that close combat is the lock, you don't have to worry about taking a Water-type Surging Strikes in this Urshifu, and you are going to be resisting any damage from this Fluttermane, so this actually is a pretty good spot for this Ogre Pond to come into. Yeah, and I love how Justin, I believe, locked into the terrestrialization on his own or Shifu as well. Now that the final Pokemon has been revealed to be that Fluttermane, I think you want to just try and get as much damage out from that Pokemon as possible. You don't necessarily want to terrestrialize on your own Ogre Pond. You can go for the three hits into the opposing or Shifu, and with the combination of the attack boost from that and possibly a little extra damage from your Ogre Pond as well, that should be enough to lock in the KO um, and give Justin the advantage here. So we'll see how Wolf plays his way around this. We do know the Urshifu still locked into close combat. Ooh. Misses the KO on the Ogre Pond by just a little bit, unfortunately for Wolf. But Dazzling Gleam immediately next will pick up the KO on that Ogre Pond. It is just Justin's Urshifu left. And with the Surging Strikes, with the Terrastalization boost, opts to take out the Fluttermane. So it goes to show you just the raw power of Urshifu. That close combat to the full health Ogre Pond on Justin's side almost gets fully knocked out and is put in range for just a single Dazzling Gleam from this Fluttermane, which is a difference maker there. If the, if the Ogre Pond is able to get an attack off on this turn, I think the game just kind of immediately ends in Justin's favor. You have the, the 2v1 with your own Urshifu versus Wolf's uh, because that Fluttermane does go down to the Surging Strikes. And now, even though Wolf's Urshifu is at minus two defense, this Surging Strikes, I don't know if it will be enough because Urshifu, Unit minus two has some pretty good defense. This is going to be very close, though, Gabby. This is going to be very close. We see it hit two times. It's just below half. We see it hit a third, oh. and it is not enough for the KO. Good information for Justin and Wolf to know that this turn, Justin's or Shifu went faster, but close combat is indeed enough damage to pick up the knockout in return. Wolf Glick up one game in the set. Good info for both players. Like you said, those Choice Scarf Urshifus we did not see interact at the same time without Tailwind up on Wolf's side until that very turn. Surging Strikes, just barely not enough to close out that game for Justin. You have to imagine if Justin had one more turn to attack with maybe the Iron Crown, maybe that Ogre Pond that came in and just got immediately knocked out, that could have been a difference maker. But Justin is not able to get past Wolf's offense. That Fluttermane coming in at the perfect time, right with Tailwind still running, with Tailwind still up, gives it the chance to attack before that Surging Strikes and claim the victory for Wolf. You know, I was also somewhat surprised to see the Fluttermane in the back for Wolf, given that I, I feel like after watching a lot of his games, he likes to have a bulkier Pokemon in the back and usually balances out his teams pretty well. You know, you have your Incineroar and your, and your Tornadus, uh, who are the more supportive roles, and then you have your physical attackers. And I, for some reason in that setup, in this matchup in particular, I was looking at this Fluttermane thinking that's probably going to be the lead with the Scarf or Shifu to sort of clean things up. But Wolf completely inverted that. Yeah. And just looking at how Justin saved the Ogre Pond in the back as well, just makes me wonder if maybe he was trying to read into their friendship a little bit too much. <laughs> and as a result, just again, just barely fell short in the end.
It did. I, I think the Fluttermane's a cool bring as a fourth Pokemon there for Wolf. It is the Booster Energy Special Attack set, which is much different from the like speed boosting set with Icy Wind that we've seen a lot lately. Yeah. The kind of you know Booster Energy Special Attack Fluttermane operates much more similarly to like a Choice Specs Fluttermane, which is very very good at coming in at the end of a game and closing it out with that boosted special attack. It's just how Wolf opted to use it in this game. Obviously. It still can't stand up to the Terra Water surging strikes, but that was more than enough for Wolf in this first game. Yeah, it was really just that dazzling gleam was all the damage that Fluttermane needed to do. And as we go into game number two, we're already seeing a Pokemon adjustment here. Amoongus and the Landorus Incarnate again versus Justin Karras' Iron Crown and Indeedee lead. This is not necessarily the Pokemon you want to be staring down if you're an Amoongus. Yeah, it's not. Amoongus does not want to be taking these big Psychic-type expanding forces. Fortunately for Wolf, the Landorus on his side is the Steel Terra. It's not the poison that we see somewhat often for both the defensive and offensive capabilities with Sludge Bomb. So Steel actually will come in very handy here. It will allow it to resist both the Tachyon Cutter and Expanding Force from this Iron Crown if Wolf needs Landorus to stick on the field here. And again, it's the Incineroar that is the Pokemon to switch in for the partner of Wolf's primary attacker. But this time around, Follow Me redirects an Earth Power into the Indeedee. Here comes that expanding force. No damage on the Incineroar, but the Landorus is oh, just wow. barely able to hang on. Yeah, just barely. That's a really big survival from Landorus. That means it will be able to stick around and get at least one more attack off if it chooses to. Obviously, it being the fastest thing on the field here, is a massive benefit for Wolf because an Earth Power would be able to KO the Ndidi. It does not carry Protect, so there's nothing that can switch in there other than Justin's Tornadus that would take even resisted damage from this Earth Power. And of course, Iron Crown itself really cannot take an Earth Power without Terrestrializing. Well, it does look like Justin was considering Terrestrialization this turn. I can't help but wonder, though, if Wolf is going to try and Terrestrialize as well. You know, we did see him Terrestrialize into that Grass-type Incineroar, earlier in yep. game number one and that certainly would be something to consider here in game number two especially knowing that the iron crown on just inside of the field is that terra water terra blast variant that uh, usually can very easily ko opposing pokemon like incineroar especially with a possible helping hand boost from that indeedy which we are seeing come through right now helping hand into the terra water iron crown Who's it gonna target? We'll have to take an Earth Power first, but without that Steel-type weakness to the Ground-type attacks, it's able to hang on and fire back a Terra Blast into that Incineroar. Oh. That is an easy one-hit knockout. Great play from Justin there. Going for the Helping Hand means that even if Landorus attacks the Ndidi that turn, the Helping Hand goes off first with that booster priority. Trastalizing the Iron Crown not only allows you to survive that Earth Power, but gives you access to the Water-type Terra Blast. Exactly what Justin needed on this turn to take care of that Incineroar. Huge one-hit KO there, although Iron the uh, Fluttermane coming in here, again, you kind of have to worry about this like, boosted Dazzling Gleams, especially because Wolf does have the option to go for that Terrestrialization of his own here. I almost think that a Terra Fairy boosted Dazzling Gleam is Wolf's best out in this situation. Yeah. Assuming that it is fast enough to outspeed the Iron Crown, you then can threaten definitely the KO on Ndidi, most likely the KO on the Iron Crown, knowing that it's now a Water-type Pokemon and it's already below half its health. And then you just hope that whatever Justin has in the back is also similarly weak to that Fluttermane. We will see a switch from Wolf to start things out with the Amoongus making a return to the field. So a great call from Wolf knowing that you either knock out the Iron Crown or in this instance, there's a Protect and Wolf mm. Moon Blast the Ndidi. Again, sending in the Amoongus on a turn that a expanding force seemed so likely from Justin. That was a fantastic read. Fantastic read. And, and specifically, I think the Moon Blast there is really important. If you don't want to waste your trust, not even waste, if you don't want to use your trust those just yet. Going straight for the Moon Blast into Ndidi, make sure the Trick Room does not go up, which I think is really important for Wolf in this case, because if Trick Room goes up and the Ndidi is still on the field, you have the option for the Safety Goggles Follow Me, so nothing can get spored. That gives you space to go for more expanding forces, which would be pretty bad for Wolf in this scenario. But Fluttermane going straight for the Moon Blast into the Ndidi on that turn ensures no Trick Room. It ensures damage getting onto the field. Again, there's no protect in that Ndidi slot, but there is on the Iron Crown, so a smart target there from Wolf. 
Unfortunately for Wolf, there is still the threat of follow me on the field, thanks to the Ogre Pond Hearthflame Mask, which is most likely why we see that Terrastalization lock into the Fluttermane this turn. Thanks to that extra Fairy-type damage, this Dazzling Gleam should do more than enough to pick up the KO onto the Iron Crown and does a little bit of damage as a bonus to the Ogre Pond Hearthflame. But most importantly, without the Iron Crown on the field anymore, the Amoongus is much more comfy could have the opportunity to go for some damage into the Ogre Pond, but instead Ivy Cudgel is more than enough to pick up that KO. Really nice terrestrialization there. Again, the, the Dazzling Gleam damage is really, really big, especially considering, again, this Hearth Flame Ogre Pond on Justin's side of the field does carry Follow Me. So you can't rely on Moonblast being able to knock out the Iron Crown. You really need the Dazzling Gleam to do it. And if the Dazzling Gleam doesn't KO, then you just get knocked out by Tachyon Cutter right afterwards. So a good use of terrestrialization to ensure that boosted damage is enough for a KO. Unfortunately, Urshifu coming in here, I think is actually really good for Justin. There's no Tailwind on Wolf's side of the field this time around. The Choice Scarf Urshifu should be able to outspeed both Fluttermane and Landorus. And of course, you can see Landorus at very low HP now. One more attack will be able to knock it out. And a Shadow Ball from Fluttermane probably isn't enough to KO this Ogre Pond. We might actually see Justin take this game off the back of this Choice Scarf Urshifu coming in. I think all Urshifu has to do to lock in the win for Justin is go for Surging Strikes into the Fluttermane. We saw how much damage it did in game number one, and I, I don't think you necessarily need the Terrastalization to ensure that KO, unless it is some sort of uh, damage roll. And then once the Fluttermane is gone, Landorus really can only attack one Pokemon. Instead, though, we do see the Surging Strikes target down that Landorus for the knockout. So Fluttermane should have the opportunity to attack this turn. And it goes for a Dazzling Gleam with that attack. Not going to do much to the Ogre Pond, but is able to get the one-hit knockout onto that Urshifu. So it's all down to Ogre Pond for Justin, and it looks like he is hoping that he will find a KO here. It's Woodhammer. There is no grassy terrain, no. but it's still enough to pick up that knockout and bring us into game number three. Who needs terrain when you have a big, big hammer? That is enough for the KO on Fluttermane, sending Justin to game three here against Wolf Glick. I couldn't have asked for more from this set, Gabby. It's been really back and forth so far especially between two players of this caliber, like in a win and in at Orlando Regionals, so much fun. I was honestly surprised at the start of that game number two, because I think like Wolf, I wasn't expecting Justin to lead the Iron Crown and Ndidi for a second game in a row. But because he did that, it felt like he just caught Wolf on the back foot with two Pokemon that really did not appreciate that psychic type combination. And as a result, he was able to try to find some sort of opening, but again, just fell short at the end game. I think Iron Crown and Didi is, is such a strong combination of Pokemon that, you know, sometimes if you're not sure what to lead, you can just say, oh, I'll just throw these out there and see what happens. Mm -hmm. And especially how this game played out, it was in a position pretty much the entire game, or for the first few turns at least, that there was not really a big threat into into that Pokemon, right? Especially since we saw the huge, you know, Terra Water, Terra Blast play into that Incineroar with the Helping Hand. That worked out so well for Justin because that eliminated what was really the best answer to that Iron Crown right off the bat. It did, and it was very clean. I, I, I can't help but wonder if that helping hand was there more so to try and anticipate the grass-type terrestrialization on the Incineroar to still do bigger damage, um, rather than just ensure that it would knock out the still fire-type version of Incineroar. Yeah. <laughs> It was cool, too. I think Wolf did make some very, very smart plays there, specifically that Moonblast into Ndidi to ensure no yeah. Trick Room, and then using the Terrestrialization later on to ensure the Dazzling Gleam KO. Uh, unfortunately, just not enough, because Ogre Pond came in here and immediately took two one-hit KOs of its own. Yeah. So yeah, it's kind of the cool part about Justin's team, too, right? You have the really scary Iron Crown that is able to dish out a bunch of damage in Psychic Terrain without expanding force, and then the Hearthflame Ogre Pond comes in and says, okay, it's my turn now, and it also gets KOs of its own. Like, there are so many Pokemon on Justin's team that have the capability to do that much damage, that even though you feel like you finally get through one in the Iron Crown, the Orgopon just comes out and says, okay, what do you got left? And the answer was not enough. Yeah, and the other cool thing about his team is that you really can mix and match your big attackers. Yeah. You can't really bring Iron Crown without Ndidi, but you could certainly bring Ndidi and the Urshifu, or Ndidi yep. and the Reggie Drago. There yeah. is a lot of flexibility to how you can approach these matchups, and I think a lot of the game is just at this team preview. You know, I let uh, Psychic Spam once. <laughs> I let Psy Spam twice. Am I going to lead it a third time? Well, let's find out because these trainers are ready to go <laughs> and get into this final game of Swiss, of uh, Pokemon in round six of Swiss. The winner of this game will be moving on to play tomorrow. And Wolf Glick starts it out once again with that Urshifu hmm. and the Tornadus with a 
third mm -hmm. in DD Iron Crown lead from Justin. Looks familiar. Exactly the same leads from game one. I think this is a, a much safer lead from Wolf here. You have the Focus Ash on Tornadus. You have the option to U-turn with Urshifu, so you give yourself flexibility right off the bat. And if you are Justin here, you kind of have to wonder, you know, is Wolf going to go for a very similar play? Do you have to, you know, commit to this U-turn play right away? The nice thing for Wolf is that if, you know, Justin tries to get fancy and maybe you, like, Water, Terra, Terra Blast, the Urshifu slot. You get to U-turn first, and if that Terra Water comes out, you just don't bring your Instant Roar in there, right? Like, you just kind of have to. <laughs> well, there it is. We do see that Water-type Terrastalization from Justin onto the Iron Crown to start off game number three. We have the benefit of knowing that he decided to pick something a little bit different after the Terrastalization, but <laughs> Wolf... Here comes the big decision. You have the U-turn, you bring that DD down to about half its health. Do you bring in the Incineroar, expecting a Terra Blast, or do you reveal your other Pokemon? It's such a hard choice here. Incineroar comes in, and if Expanding Force is the choice, it's still a great turn for Wolf. But if Terra Blast goes into that slot, it's gonna be a pretty much a disaster. Bleak Wind Storm does find its target, bringing the Indeedee down into the red and dropping Iron Crown's speed and Indeedee's speed stage each. And it was the Terrastalization into Expanding Force. Justin trying to be a little tricky there, yeah. <laughs> but does not catch Wolf off guard. And the Tornadus will not be KO'd as Indeedee went for Trick Room. Trick Room does get set up there. Interesting. I, I think the Terra Water means it's already you know, you have the option to go for the damage on Incineroar right off the bat. But I think that was a kind of a tricky play from Justin, going immediately for that Terrastalization, even though it wasn't really necessary, you know, defensively. It kind of forced Wolf to reconsider bringing an Incineroar. And like we said, if that, that Terra Terrastalization primes the Terra Blast into that slot, trying to make the read for U-turn. But Wolf has to think twice, you know, do I bring an Incineroar, risking the Terra Blast there, or just bring it in because it's still safe. You probably survive one without a helping hand. And if you go for the Expanding Force, obviously it's a much better swap here because now the Trick Room is up. Incineroar should be able to attack before the Iron Crown, maybe get a Parting Shot off or just knock out this Ndidi. And of course, because Wolf did not Tailwind, those speed interactions stay the same. Ndidi will switch out, revealing Justin brought his own Tornadus in the back. A very peculiar pick, knowing that he opted to Trick Room the turn prior. We will see Wolf lock in the Terrastalization into that Incineroar for Grass Typing, so will not be taking super effective damage from the ter Terra Blast anymore from Iron Crown. No super effective Terra Blast, but that does, again, open up the option for Expanding Force to connect into that slot. Wolf opts to protect his own Tornadus, not wanting to take any damage, but Terra Blast comes through. Great Terrestrialization from Wolf means that this Incineroar will take barely any damage and have the option to attack freely. One interesting note here about the speed interactions as well. I'm pretty sure it was the speed drop from the Bleak Wind Storm, Ooh, the turn yeah. fire, that does allow this Iron Crown now to outspeed Incineroar in the Trick Room. So it was great for Wolf. He was able to take that Terra Blast the previous turn. Now Justin, though, I think can click Expanding Force pretty freely. He can, yeah, especially now that this Incineroar, again, no longer a Grass type. The Tornadus on Wolf's end has used its Focus Sash up. This Expanding Force can come here uh, pretty freely and no double protect from this Tornadus on Wolf's side. Trying to find an opportunity to stall out Trick Room, unfortunately does not get the double protect on the Tornadus. Incineroar able to hold on through that Expanding Force and get one final attack in here. Will opt to parting shot the opposing Iron Crown to drop its special attack and attack by one stage. That's what I'm surprised we didn't see come through the prior turn, especially considering you're using that Terrastalization to keep Incineroar healthy so it can combat this Iron Crown, but instead going for that knockoff to try and kill the Ndidi. Fluttermane, the option here, comes in off the parting shot, will activate its booster energy and boost its special attack thanks to Protosynthesis. But Justin's Tornadus has the option to throw out a Bleak Wind Storm here, get some decent damage off there. That's probably expanding force range, Gabby, and no speed drop, it looks like. No, no speed drop. So good for, for Justin and Tailwind here, or yeah. in Room. And especially knowing that the Psychic Terrain has not expired yet either, Wolf can't even go for a fake out into that Iron Crown to try and stop it from moving this turn. I think Justin has the momentum on his side, and unfortunately for Wolf, will have to try, can protect one turn with the Fluttermane, uh, but will have to potentially opt for a double protect and then a 
must be like a choice scarf aqua jet or something yeah. if you want to at least get some damage onto a pokemon once the incineroar has been knocked out wolf does try and flinch the opposing tornadoes but it does opt for a protect so no damage this turn and here comes that expanding force it ko's the oh, incineroar but fluttermane is able to hold on with just a fraction a sliver of its health and get one attack in here will it be enough to turn the tides moon blast comes out here into this iron crown huge damage but not enough to the ko just yet really big survival there from that flutter main thanks to the parting shot on the prior turn lowering the special attack of the iron crown unfortunately for wolf this choice scarf oshifu comes in and it cannot aqua jet because the psychic terrain is up and dv is still around in the back i believe so we have you know the option to reset it up later on in this game and the tornadoes on justin's end even if trick room ends you can just go for your own tailwind because i believe this might be the last turn of trick room it is the last turn of trick room and it is i think the last turn of that psychic terrain as well. Fluttermane able to protect this turn, but that Urshifu will be taking the full power of this expanding force, minus the parting shot that dropped the special <laughs> attack, but that oh. is not enough to protect it from a KO. Knocked out in a single hit. Now Tornado is able to go on the offense with Bleak Wind Storm, but Wolf down to his final Pokemon with Trick Room expiring and with Tailwind available to Justin. It seems like Justin will be taking the win here in just a turn. That's really well played from Justin there. Preserving that Ndidi to reset up that psychic terrain later on if needed, I think was very smart. But of course, making great use of the trick room of those four turns it was available, making sure that Iron Crown stuck around as long as possible to get those huge expanding forces off. And not only that, playing it super safe this turn, opting to swap in the Ndidi, drop the special attack drop that was present on that Pokemon earlier, and ensure that Tailwind is 100% set up so that the Iron Crown should outspeed the opposing Fluttermane for the KO. So even though it looks like Wolf may have found his footing here, I think Justin found the way to guarantee that Tailwind gets up. And you still have your Ogre Pond on top of all that. You sure do. The Ogre Pond and Iron Crown will easily be enough to dispatch this Fluttermane and send Justin into day two here in Orlando. I believe Justin also made it into the top cut last year in Orlando before we had the day two structure at regionals. So even though they're both Charlotte regional champions and Wolf's the defending Orlando champion, Justin's saying, hey, I can play down here in Florida too. Yeah, and you know, even though Wolf did lose this round, Justin moving on undefeated 7-0 and to compete uh, tomorrow, of course, during day two, but also for a couple more Swiss rounds here today. Uh, I don't think you can necessarily count either of these trainers out at this point. No. Like you said,